What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TW Motorsports and today, yes, we are back on the Tahoe. So yes, it looks a little bit different from the last time you guys seen it because uh, I found some lower profile tires. Now, these are not what's gonna go on it. I'm gonna do some different wheels, but I needed to get a smaller tire and it looks really, really bad. But um, I had to do that because we are dropping the front and I was afraid it was gonna rub with those bigger tires. Uh, they're just a little too bulky. So, uh, like I said, I found some used ones and uh, I'm gonna end up selling these wheels and tires once the thing's painted. But we need to lower the front of it. Got my helper out here with me. You gonna say hi? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> So he's gonna help me today. Uh, it's probably gonna take me a course of a couple days. So you guys might see my beard change because uh, chances are I'll, I'll probably shave it. But uh, anyway, we're gonna start by getting this thing off the ground. We're gonna get the wheels and tires off and we are going to dismantle the entire front of this. Now I also got the shock extensions for the back. So I'll probably put those on in this video as well. But let's get started by getting this thing off the ground, get it on jack stands and get the front wheels off. Now that we have the wheels and tires off, uh, we have quite a bit to disassemble because we are going to be replacing, and I'll show you guys as we get to the stuff, but we're going to be replacing the upper A-arm, the lower A-arm, we are going to be replacing all the inner and outer tie rod ends, all of the uh, pitman arm, and everything else on the inside. The only thing I'm leaving is the actual drag link, so all this stuff's going to come out. Spring's going to come out. Uh, shock's gonna come out, but the very first thing I'm gonna start with is the brake, get it out of the way, and I'm just gonna let it hang over here. I've got some um, pieces to hold it up, but in order to get that off, you need a 10 millimeter, which is how you get these out. Not my favorite method, but that is how they come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the brake out of the way, at least the caliper itself and the pad, and then we will work on probably getting the rotor off. Now that we have the caliper off, you can see I've got it hanging over there and I'm probably gonna replace this brake line just because it looks pretty old, which means I'm probably gonna have to take those two bolts out. Well, I'm gonna have to take those bolts out anyway because it's bolted to the upper A-arm, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the dust cap and guys, what I'm using is just a little punch that I've got and I'm just trying to get in between here. We'll get the dust cap off and then there should be a cotter pin in there and a bolt. Once we get that off, then we can pull this all of the way. I'll show you guys once I get this off what it looks like. So the guy that I bought this from actually said he rebuilt a lot of the front stuff on this when he did the A-arms, but uh, it looks like the grease is packed in really well here, guys, and it looks like pretty new grease. So I may not have to repack these bearings when I go back together. I probably will, but uh, everything looks good. But you can see the cotter key that's been over here. Let's see if I can bend it out. And this is a mess. I absolutely hate these wheel bearings. It's like my least favorite thing to do. I like the new school stuff where it's just a sealed bearing. Um, let me know in the comments, guys, if you feel my pain. Uh, it's just way easier to just bolt a new one in. Now, I know these are obviously a lot cheaper, but all right, we'll pull this thing out. And uh, there's just a bolt behind it. I may go get some cutters to cut the end of this cutter key off, but. We'll get this out of the way and then there's a bolt right here. We'll take the bolt off and then we'll be able to pull this whole assembly out. Now, when you do that, chances are your bearings might fall out. So just keep in mind um, that they might bounce out and roll out of the way, but that's our next step. Now that we have the actual rotor out of the way, you can see we have several little half inch uh, bolts. Now, it's kind of weird to me because most of the time on the newer stuff that I work on, like my trucks and stuff, it's all metric, but this is old enough where it still uses standard, which is fine. I just don't use it as much, but half inch, I'm going to go ahead and take the ABS ring off. And then once I get it off, I'll go ahead and take this off as well. This is just the dust shield and I'll probably clean it up off site before I put it back together because I want this to look nice and new. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get those out of the way and then we'll probably work on the spindle at that point maybe getting the tie rod in loose next. Now that that uh, dust plate's out of the way, I did go ahead, there's a bolt that actually holds it to the bottom of the ball joint. You can see this back bolt. I did go ahead and take it out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take, um, these are actually, I mean, 11 millimeter fits on it best in my opinion. So I'm gonna take those out. I told you everything was standard, but it doesn't seem to be. Even these, uh, I used a half inch on it, but it was really snug. When I switched to a 13, it fit to me a little nicer. So maybe it is metric, I don't know. 
Anyway, we've got that out. I'm gonna go ahead and take that bolt out so the brake line will be free. And then this one did not, it did have a cotter key, but it was barely in there. So I'm gonna go ahead, take it loose next. And um, I'm not sure what size that is. I'll give you guys, uh, or I'll let you guys know here in a minute. And we'll try to knock this out. And then we can move on to hopefully getting the spindle out of the way. So as you can see, I did go ahead and get the adjustment rod and the inner and outer tie rod loose. So what I did was I took the cotter pin out and I was gonna tell you guys sizes, but I'm pretty sure uh, because this has been changed, it's different. So I used a 19 here and I used a 19 on the inside. Actually, I used a 19 here and 18 on the inside. And then I used a 19 and a 19 on the other side. So I don't think it's the same. So just whatever fits, once you get that cotter pin off and I just hit it with a claw hammer, I know it's, it's not really the best, but uh, generally I have a sledge. I just, it's in my basement garage and I haven't went and got it. But now we're gonna move on to, I went ahead and took all the cotter keys out of all the other stuff. So basically if it has a cotter key in it, like all the stuff under the truck, um, let me show you under there what I've got so far. I went ahead, like I said, and took both inner and outer tie rods loose. Now, I'm going to be leaving the drag link here, and you guys also know that I went ahead and replaced the, the uh, steering gear and the arm off of it. So I also have to do the pitman arm, or wait, no, it's an idler arm. Pitman arm, I already replaced. Idler arm, I have to replace. So I'm also gonna be replacing this box right above it. And uh, so all this stuff's gonna have to come out. But I did go ahead and get the cotter pins out of all of it, aside from that piece over there because we're gonna be leaving it. And the drag link looks pretty good, so I don't need to replace it. It's a pretty solid piece of metal, so honestly, not a lot of time does it need replaced. So before I do anything on the bottom of the car, I am gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the A-arms out of the way. Now, uh, in order to do that, we need to loosen those bolts. I'm just gonna loosen them, and then I'm gonna tap them with a hammer to release the pressure on that spring, and then I'll bring a jack out and put underneath this while I let pressure off of it. Now. Uh, at the same time, I'll probably go ahead and loosen up my shocks and I'm going to spray those down and probably let them set overnight. So the next part of this video you guys will probably see will be another day. So the sunlight might be in a different direction, but uh, I just don't have enough time to do that tonight. And I want to let some penetrating oil set on those. So it is the next day guys. And uh, I just got to work on this a little bit each night because I have a regular job, but we are ready to take the upper and lower ball joints loose. Now I'm just loosening them. I am not going to take them completely out. So I'm gonna get them loose. And then I've got my little five pound or four pound sledge that I'm going to use to strike it here to try to separate that joint. Now, if you guys have a pickle fork, you can use it. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of it because it tears up the ball joint, which we'll be using new ones. So after I get this knocked loose, not gonna take the nut completely off on either one. I'm gonna go ahead and get the shock out. Once we get the shock out, then I'll go get my jack. We'll put this uh, jack underneath the spring pocket and we'll gradually lower this thing down. So honestly, I think it helps because this had had this replaced before because I just hit it a couple times and as you can see, we are loose. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead, get underneath and take the shock out. Now, guys, this was inch and a quarter or inch and a sixteenth and this was one inch up top. So uh, just depending on what you've got in there, that's what I had to use. I'm not sure on the bottom, it looks like a half inch or a 13 millimeter to get the bottom of the shock off. And then we'll worry about the top, which is like a, a little nut that you can see just up in here. We'll get both of those off. I did spray those down so they should be loose. And uh, once we do that, like I said, I'll go grab the jack and we'll let this thing down, get the um, old spindle out of the way. So I went ahead and took the two bolts out of the bottom of the shock here and they were 13. Uh, the top seems to be 9 16 so that's what we're going to use. But before I do that, I'm going to put my jack underneath this, lift it up a little, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep pressure on it, but I'm going to take the spindle off, and I'm going to leave the jack under while the spindle's off, but then I'll be able to push this upper A-arm up and then have a little better access to the top of the shock. Now that I have the spindle out of the way, literally you have way more room. I push the A-arm all the way up and see how much more access you have. You probably could get it with the spindle in place, but it would just be a lot more cumbersome. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then we'll let this down. The spring will come out uh, where it will at least loosen up. Then we can swing the bottom A-arm down, get the spring out and the shock out. As you can see, I let the spring down really slow and, or the bottom A-arm down really slow and the spring came right out and so did the shock. So. You want to relieve as much pressure on this as possible. I like to get, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got it up a little bit higher and that gave that A-arm room to swing underneath. 
Uh, so now we're ready to take the A-arms loose. So it shouldn't be too bad. Just have a nut and bolt. And I'm not really sure on the size of that. It's probably the same as the upper, I'd say one and one sixteenth or one inch. They're pretty good size, maybe even 24 millimeter. Uh, pretty good size on both the upper and the lower. But we're gonna get those out of the way and that'll be everything we need as far as the suspension on the outer side. And then we'll move on to under the truck and get the rest of it out. As you can see, I went ahead and got the bottom A-arm off. And guys, that was a 7 8 on both sides and uh, just a bolt that runs through those. Pretty easy to get those out. They weren't super tight, although they should be a little tighter, I think, than what they were. But now we're gonna move on to the top. And I did go ahead and take, there's a couple lines that bolt to the top of the spring cup here. I did go ahead and take those off. They were 13 millimeter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the upper A-arm out, which are just two thirteen. I think they're, oh, they're 13 sixteenths is what they are. So I'm gonna take both sides out and then we'll have all the A-arms out of the way. So as you can see, now I have the upper and lower A-arms both off, so on um, both sides. So now I'm under here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the um, Pittman arm off here, or the idler arm, I guess, the Pittman arm's on the other side. I'm gonna take the idler arm off. 15 sixteenths is what size this is here, and uh, 7 eighths is the inner size. So I'm probably gonna take this loose first and then knock it loose, and then I will take this one loose, and then we'll worry about getting the box off. So I went ahead and got the bolt to both this and this loose on the idler arm. I will tell you guys that the center sometimes spins. You can put a hex head in the middle to keep it from moving while you loosen this up. But now we're going to take this bracket off and there are three of these 18 millimeters. To me, that's the size that fits it best. Three quarters is too big, 11 sixteenths is too small, 18 seems to be just right. So it seems like we're going back and forth between standard and metric. but. There's three of these, like I said, one here, one at the top, one on the other side, and you have access from the outside here to do that. So you're gonna need something on both sides in order to get this out of place. But after we get that out, we will be finished with everything we're taking off. Once you get those bolts loose, those three, that thing drops right out of the way and was able to get the arm and the actual bracket off itself. So we are finished. Now we can start the cleaning process. I do still have to loosen up the brake lines. I did order new brake lines and I also ordered new ABS lines for both sides. And they actually come with a new bracket, which is cool because I don't have to paint those now. So uh, I think the next step, like I said, guys, is we're gonna go ahead and start stripping some of the junk off this and maybe give it a fresh coat of paint. I'm not really sure, but we are definitely gonna be cleaning on it. So as you can see, I have everything out of the way now. I did go ahead and unplug the ABS line. It's back here on the back side of the frame. And then I pushed the brake caliper and the line up above. And the reason I did that is I'm gonna go ahead and scrub this down. I'm gonna use my power washer first, um, get it all cleaned up. And then once it's clean, I'm probably gonna put some sort of paint on it. I think I'll probably use POR 15 on the frame. Um, as far as this, I may just use a can of semi-gloss black, but I wanna get this clean before I go back together and it'll just make it a lot easier. I probably will clean on the bottom side as well, but as far as the top side, like up here, I'm gonna get as far as I can, but then once the motor's out down the road, I'll be able to dress that a little bit more. Now, I will tell you on this side, you have a little more corrosion because the battery is up there, and I'm gonna be fixing that probably when I take the motor out, but I am gonna knock some of the rust off before I paint this. So anyway, I won't show you guys this process. I'll show you once it's clean. I might show you some of the painting process, but uh, that is kind of my next step before we start to go back together. So unfortunately guys, I have not been able to paint because it's been raining and uh, everything is soaking wet. So what I think I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna be removing this bumper anyway for paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off because I wanna get um, this area right behind here with my paint that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these two bolts out. So there's two on that bracket, then one that comes up from the bottom here. And then the other ones are all underneath here. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and take off the uh, grill in order to get access to those other bolts. But uh, I think getting that out of the way is something that I wanna do before I paint this anyway and start putting this back together. But I'm gonna show you guys the painting process. It's just not gonna be today. It should be in this video though, because I do wanna show you guys uh, the parts that I've got and kind of the reassembly process all in one video. I'd like to anyway. So. Uh, we'll see kind of how it goes, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and get this bumper off. So to get the grill off, all we got to do is take, there's a series of seven millimeter bolts. So there's two, one here, one on the other side, and there's several across the middle here. There's one here 
and then one in the center of the grill. But we're going to get those out of the way and we should be able to, the bottom piece is broken so the grill's already loose. Normally it snaps into this bottom piece, uh, but because it's broken we won't have to worry about unsnapping that. So for down here, it's the exact same size. You can see it's busted. So um, I don't know what's going on here. Obviously they hit something and pushed the bumper back. The bumper's not really bent that bad. So I don't know how they managed to uh, break all this stuff, but they did. So I'm gonna get it the rest of the way off. And then we'll have access to those bolts for the bumper. Now that that's out of the way, I'm using an 18 on these. Um, I'm going to see if I can get these out. Chances are they're probably going to be pretty tough. Now there is one on the top, one on the bottom, and the piece on the bottom is actually cut out so you can get to them. So we'll see here how tight they are. So as you can see, I skipped ahead a little bit. I did go ahead and take the brackets off. Um, guys, that's just a, I think it was a seven eighths for the ones that go into the frame horn here. And then that bracket that went off to the side, those were 18 millimeters. So got all those off. And like I said, I wanted those out of the way because I think I'm gonna paint that while I paint this section right here. And uh, that was covering some of it up. So I am gonna have to clean it one more time. But the next step, guys, is I'm going to get out here and start painting it. It has started to dry up, so maybe I can do it tonight. If not, I will start tomorrow, but you guys are going to see it in this video. I'm ready to paint, it actually dried up. And uh, guys, what I'm gonna be using is POR 15. I've got some left over from when I did it on the rear end of the green truck. And so I'm just gonna paint the frame, okay? So the up here, I'm gonna do with uh, something different. I'm not really sure yet, but for now I'm gonna paint the the outside of the frame here, probably the bottom side, and then I'm gonna try to get in the areas below. Now, I did also wipe it down with that 3M adhesive remover, especially up here, and uh, I did wash it again. So, we are ready to start applying this stuff. Guys, I am using, I just bought a whole bunch of foam brushes because this stuff burns through brushes like crazy, and I do have another cup to pour it in. So, right now, we're gonna go ahead, I'll probably time lapse most of this for you guys, but we're gonna see if we can get some of this coated. So after one coat of the POR15, this is what it looks like. And it came out really well, guys. I'm pretty happy with it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use some Rust-Oleum. I know this isn't the greatest. I've got one of these can toppers on, to be honest with you, because it just kills my hands to uh, I just hold that trigger down. It gets old. So I know I'm being lazy, but um, you know, it's probably not. I, I just did one coat of the POR15 because the frame honestly is not that bad. It just had some surface rust. I knocked most of that off, uh, the big stuff, and so now I just want to put a top coat on it, and I wasn't going to do POR15 on the inner fender wheels. A lot of times I just paint these with um, 
just spray paint, just cheap flat black or semi-gloss or gloss, whatever you guys want to use. But uh, I'll list that in the description down below. It's just cheap stuff you can get wherever. I generally try to buy just a bulk of it on Amazon. But I'm going to go over this. And then once we do that, I'll give you guys a look at it and we will move on to assembly. This is what we have after painting. So I went over this obviously with the POR15 and then I went over it with some gloss, uh, just black out of a can. And then I did semi-gloss on the um, actual fender well itself so it's not quite as bright and vibrant but we're ready to go back together now guys I think it looks really good and uh, like I said it's not perfect the perfect way to do this would be to blow this thing off the frame have the frame powder coated but we're not gonna get to that level although I'd love to believe me I would love to do that uh, we're not gonna be doing that so this is good and so we're ready to start reassembly so let's go over here and take a look at all the parts we got because we got a lot of parts so basically if you could put it on new I bought it so uh, I told you guys from the get-go I didn't like the lower control arm drop so I bought stock upper and lower a arms I bought new uh, brakes same thing the power stop that I've used on everything else I will list all this stuff down in the descriptions like always I bought new inner and outer tie rods I bought a new Pittman arm I bought uh, new shocks uh, new brake lines new front calipers which actually aren't setting out here I brought uh, or I bought new uh, what are these? Oh, those are the ABS plates. Uh, basically, like I said, if you could buy it new other than bolts, I bought it. So other thing I talk, I didn't talk about is DJM. Now you guys know that I'm not a huge DJM fan. Uh, a lot of times back in the day, they used uh, the A-arm drop, which is the A-arm, DJM A-arm is what I took off of this thing. But uh, the downside to like Belltech on these style trucks is that you have, it pushes the wheel out. I didn't want to mess with that. So the DJ arm, uh, DJM drop spindle actually does not do that. And I will list it in the description down below as well as the spring. So it's a three inch spring, it's a two inch spindle. So we should get a total of five inches of drop in the front. Now, when this thing was originally together, it was a two inch drop in the front. It was a two inch Lorraine A arm. So uh, it's gonna be quite a bit different, three inches more. So that is why I bought what I bought. I know some of you guys are probably wondering like, well, why do you have Beltec shocks? Well, I really like Beltec shocks. And the reason, I just explained the reason why I don't like the spindles and the springs. Honestly, guys, you can buy those from whoever you would like. Uh, they, DJM just had a deal where when I bought these together, it was a little bit cheaper. But now we are ready to start putting this thing back together. And I think guys, what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna start with the A-arms. I'm gonna start with the, uh, either the bottom or the top A-arm first. We'll get those into place and then we should be able to set our spindle in and uh, we'll probably finish with some of the brakes. But I'm going to go grab a couple parts. We'll get them up here into place and uh, we'll kind of talk about torque specs and all that stuff as we go. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the upper. And uh, guys, I don't think this was put together properly, but the proper way to do this is you can see that's rounded off on the front. Those pieces face the inside and the bolt actually goes in from the inside out. So the nut will be out here and we're working on the passenger side right now. So the nut will be on the front side of the truck and the back side of the truck. Same thing on the other side. And I'm, not, I'm only gonna show you guys one side as I assemble it, but that is how this goes. Now we do not need to tighten these down real tight. Uh, we're gonna put these in and then just loosely uh, put this guy on and thread the nut on the end. It also didn't have any spacers uh, when I took it apart but as you know it's been taken apart before so not really sure we may have to get some shims when we do an alignment we'll just have to see what they want to do but I'm gonna go ahead and put this into place and uh, get these finger tight as you can see I went ahead and got the a-arm in place now guys I will tell you don't forget to put your grease cert in the center here it comes separate sometimes they come together but make sure you put that in there um, well to, to me this is the easiest time to do it but now we're gonna move on to the bottom one and I will tell you guys sometimes the bottom one is a little cumbersome a lot of times I use a plastic or a rubber mallet to pop it into place because it just doesn't want to line up perfectly and uh, now that's whether you're using stock ones or aftermarket they just never seem to go in smoothly so you may have to knock around on those now the bolt orientation I'm doing the same way but I don't think it really matters on the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and get the bottom in place and then we'll go grab the spring and uh, the spindle now that I have the bottom a arm in place and I will tell you guys that thing's going to fight you um, there's just no good way to get it in there to be quite honest with you you just have to, I used a rubber mallet and kind of tapped on both sides until I got it up where I could get the bolts in. And uh, it 
a lot of times it does fight you because they tend to shrink up when they're bolted down. Anyway, uh, it's kind of a fight, and I didn't show you guys that on camera. I'm kind of trying to show you after I do each step, but uh, if you have any issues, uh, just use a rubber mallet and tap those things in, into place. You kind of got to tap one side and then the other. But now that we've got that in place, we're ready to put the spring in. Now, I will tell you guys that this thing, whether, um, I don't know if the person before me took the rubber piece out, but there is a rubber isolator up top and you want to keep that in place. Uh, it didn't fall out. It seems to be crimped from the factory up above and it's in this pocket. But we're gonna line this up and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this section right here on, basically we want it to line up right here in the pocket. Um, sometimes it doesn't line completely up but you wanna get it as close as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my son come out. I'm gonna put it in the top first, so up in the pocket up top and uh, with this oriented where it needs to be and then he's going to jack the, basically we're gonna put a jack under this and um, lift this thing up once it's up as far as I can get it, uh, making sure the spring's in place, then we can leave the jack in place and go grab our spindle and slide it on. But I'll show you guys, once I get it jacked up, before you get the spindle in place, uh, kind of what you're looking at. This is what it looks like with the spring uh, lifted up. So as you can see, I've got my jack on the bottom side here of the A-arm. Just lifted it up to compress that spring. You wanna make sure it's in the pocket on the bottom and the pocket on the top, and it is. I will say guys, it seems a little close to the front here, but it is centered in the pocket up above. So we're gonna go ahead, grab the spindle and bolt it into place. So uh, the good thing is we didn't tighten this up because it has to be done at right height. So I'm gonna go ahead, it'll be real easy to slide the spindle in here and uh, just get these two nuts tightened. The top one here, we're gonna torque to 50 foot pounds once I get the spindle on. The bottom one is 94. Now, you may have to swing a little past that in order to get the um, cotter key in. I will tell you guys, these are just shipping pieces to keep the boot from getting beat up. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take these off, grab the spindle and get it into place and torque down. So now we have the spindle in place. I went ahead and put the cotter keys in. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the new ABS plates that I bought. And so they just slide back on. Now one of the bolts is already there. See, as you can see, the one that actually bolts the ring to the plate but you are gonna have to reuse your old parts or bolts that came out that holds it to the actual spindle. And they should be threaded the same. I will tell you guys, the, li the alignment of these is not the greatest. As you can see, they don't, they don't line up real great, which I'm gonna blame the spindle and the reason I say that is because a lot of times the spindle's not completely drilled and tapped just like these guys. These are GM parts. So, um, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a spindle. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. I'm just snugging these down, guys. I don't have a torque spec for them. And um, we'll worry about this a little later. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. So, now that we have um, that into place, we're going to go on to the shock. So... I will tell you guys that the only way to run this dust cap is to put it in with the spring. Well, obviously I didn't do that because you can't fit it in the bottom with this on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it off. It's not a huge deal. Um, it just kind of keeps dust out of it. I've, you know, a lot of shocks don't even come with this, but if you guys want to take it back apart and put that in, I understand. I am not going to, however, what you do have to do though, is you have to take the upper bushing off, then this guy. And then you can take this off and put the bushing back on, making sure that the bigger end, you can see, is down. And now all we have to do is put this up from the bottom and the bottom torque to 20 foot pounds. And the top, guys, I just like to make this bushing come out to where it's even with this copper uh, plate. So um, it says 100 inch pounds. I'm not gonna do that though, however, um, like I said, I'm gonna make sure that it's like just sandwiched in between there and we should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we will be set uh, as far as the shock goes. Now that we got the shock in place, I'm gonna go ahead and put the new bracket for the idle arm in place. Um, this is, guys, it does come with a remote um, fill. 
So if you can't get to this, I don't know whether I'm going to use it or not, but if you do, you can take this out, which is kind of nice. And I did buy a new one of these. Uh, like I said, I'm replacing everything on the entire vehicle in the front other than the drag link. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into place. You're probably going to need a magnet to put those bolts in because they're pretty short and uh, you just push them through on the other side and bolt this together. I am going to put the idle arm on while I'm doing all this so I can go together as one piece and uh, then maybe we'll move out to the tie rod ends. Now that I've got this in place, I will tell you guys that you really need to put these in at the same time. So not only the bracket that holds the idler arm, but the idler arm itself. They all need to go in together. Otherwise, you're never going to get um, this bolted down and then put this on. It's just not going to happen unless you want to undo the other side. And I didn't want to do that. So I put it all in together. Uh, a couple things I will tell you guys. There is a small piece of foam that goes in between the idler arm and the drag link here. Uh, I've just got these hand tight. Now I did go ahead and tighten the frame bolts that hold this bracket to the frame. 59 foot pounds is what that goes to. I also did not add that filler and that's the reason why is I still have access to it. So I can still get to it so there's no need to add that. But at this point I'm going to go ahead and um, just snug these down by hand and then I think we'll move on to the outer tie rod ends. I got my tie rod here and we got Obviously we have an outer and an inner and the way you can tell them apart is the outer will have the grease zert on the bottom and the inner will have it on the inside. So um, that's kind of how you can tell them apart. They are different. Now I did buy a new adjustment sleeve as well. So both inner and outer and the adjustment sleeve are new. I did leave this on here guys and I didn't really need to uh, because this adjustment or this lock nut is really not needed. It is on there though, I'm not gonna take it back apart to take it off, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these in uh, just in the reverse process that they came off. So this will come up from the bottom and the bolt will go on the top. And then this guy will go on the inside of your idler arm or actually the drag link, I guess. And uh, you may have to make some adjustments here. Normally, if you were just replacing this, you could count the threads or kind of mark so you get your alignment back close. But because of all the stuff we've changed, obviously we're not going to be doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in. Then we'll talk about the torque specs for these and uh, the few other things that I haven't torqued yet. And we'll hopefully get the cotter keys in. Now that the tie rod's installed, I'm going to go ahead and torque this to 46 foot pounds. And then I'm going to put my cotter key in. And then we'll go underneath and talk about all the torque specs for the things that we've done in there. So the inner tie rod and the idler arm. And I already talked about the bracket itself going to 59 foot pounds on the frame. Uh, but I haven't tightened anything up underneath. So the things that we have left to torque down down here are the idler arm to the bracket. So that goes to 90. And then the actual idler arm to the drag link or the center link, that goes to 50. And uh, this one requires a cotter key and this one does not. Uh, the other thing guys is I could not find a torque setting on this guy, so the inner tie rod. So I'm gonna put it to 46 just like the outside on both sides. So uh, if you guys know that, drop that in the comments down below. I'd love to know that information. And then as far as the adjustment sleeves, I'm gonna leave those loose for now. Uh, I'm gonna kinda hand snug them up but I'm gonna leave them loose because once I get it uh, all together, I'm gonna to probably make some adjustments. So we'll tighten those up at the very last, but that should be all we have to do underneath this thing. And uh, then we can move out to the brakes and the wheel bearings and all that jazz, uh, which will probably be another day, as you guys can probably tell, it's getting a little dark, but I'm gonna go ahead, tighten these down, torque these down and get the cotter keys in. I went ahead and got the outers already finished. At this point, we're ready to put the wheel bearings in and the actual rotor itself. So uh, a couple important things, guys, make sure you put a ton of grease on this guy here uh, when you're sliding it on. Now, I am going to reuse my old bearings. Um, they are still in good shape, both the inner and the outers. Uh, you will have to buy a new seal. Chances are you're going to break those when you're taking the old ones out. But I'm going to go ahead and put all this together. I won't show you guys that because there's tons of videos out there showing you how to pack wheel bearings. It's essentially the uh, same process. I am going to have to get some new dust caps, though, um, because the new spindle sets a little bit farther out. And I'll list those in the description as well. But uh, it's just a little bit longer. So the factory ones... I don't even know if those are the factory ones. They're probably not, but they just won't go down. And I, the reason I know that is I'll show you the other side. I went ahead and did it and uh, I couldn't get that into place. So um, the other thing, guys, is it says to torque this to 12, mil or 12 foot pounds and then back it off until you can get your, um, I guess, the cotter key in. 
So that's what I did. I tightened it to 12 foot pounds. I backed it off and then I tightened it back by hand. And um, that was, I was able to get the cotter key in and there's no play as you can see. So we are good here. Now I did clean this off before I put it on, but to be quite honest with you, I'm gonna have to do it again because you're gonna get grease on it. There's just no way to keep from doing that. Normally uh, on a sealed bearing truck, you can put all this, basically clean it up and then put it together. But on this guy, because of the grease and all that, we're obviously going to have to uh, clean it again. So I'll show you guys once I'm all finished up and then we will move on to the new brakes. I got new calipers, I'll show you guys that. And then obviously we got to hook up our brake lines and our ABS line. So now that we have that all assembled and guys, what a mess. I just, I hate doing this. I'd rather do a sealed bearing all day long, but uh, it's finished and we're together. So a uh, new dust cap there, but now we're ready to put on our new brake calipers. And I opted to buy some from Power Stop, which I'll list below, and uh, new brake pads. So I do have to slide the brake pads in. They actually clip in, and uh, then we can bolt those into place, and we'll talk about the torque specs on the brakes. But I'm gonna get those up into place. I am putting them on without any lines because I'm going to undo my lines. I did buy new brake lines, so we'll do that. Uh, that'll be one of the last things we do, actually. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get these on, and then we'll take a look at them. Now all we have to do is tighten up the guide bolts, uh, which we just put in that uh, hex head. I don't remember what size it is here. I want to say 3 8 is what the size is. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and tighten these up to 30 foot pounds, both top and bottom. And I really like the look of these brakes, guys. Now I know um, they're not quite as good as other options that you could have had, but I think it's going to do a lot better. And um, you know, those I'm thinking those were the original calipers. So. I think it'll be I think it'll be good once we get it all together. The downside is the way these clip on, man, I, I scraped just the corners of the red, which kind of is irritating, but I'll deal with it. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those up and um, really at that point all I need to do is like plug my ABS line in and button a few things up as far as um, I need to put a, a new brake line in. Like I said, I got a new brake line. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and um, there's a bolt that holds the brake line bracket here. But other than that, uh, I think we're almost ready to put this thing back together as far as putting the wheels on, get some weight on the suspension, and then we will go back and torque our upper and lower um, A-arms. So you know we never tighten those and they're still loose, but you really need to tighten those because they're rubber, you need to tighten them with the suspension loaded or weight on the wheels. So. Uh, I think that's probably the next thing I'll show you. Uh, one of these guys does have to come undone, one of your ball joint brackets, in order to get this in place. Um, I don't think there's anything else that you guys will need to see. It's literally just the opposite of the way we put it together. This is pretty much the last torque spec other than the upper and lower A-arms, which we'll get to. So for the most part, we are finished up. I've got everything back together. I will tell you guys, uh, 11 millimeter is what hooks your brake line. I did replace the brake line. Uh, you got a couple 13 millimeters here that hold stuff basically out of the way of the exhaust and the A-arm. And then your ABS line, you need to undo your upper ball joint bolt here, the one back in the back on, this is the passenger side. Same thing, just mirrored on the other side, but to, you need to retorque that to 20 foot pounds if you take it loose and put it back together. And then there's a plastic plug that goes on the bottom of the A-arm here, that's part of that ABS line as well. And then route it back away from the exhaust to plug it in. So we're all finished up as far as bolting things onto it. Now I do have to have my son come out here and help me bleed the brakes. I won't show you guys that process. I also need to go and put grease in all of my fittings. So I'm gonna go through and do that. Uh, other than that, I've got pressure uh, on it with a jack. And so this is ride height right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and torque the upper and lower control arm. So the uppers go to 140 and the lowers go to 121. So I'm gonna go ahead, torque those, do all the grease and all of the grease zerts, and then I think that's about it. I don't have my sway bar right now because I'm painting it and just to make it look a little nicer, but as far as those go, there's really not much to that. You bolt the D-rings to the frame, and then I don't torque these. I go until the actual gasket smashes. So. Uh, that's kind of how I do those. I don't really think there's, I'm sure there's probably a torque spec for the factory ones, but because I'm not using factory ones, um, not gonna need that. So other than that, guys, I think the next thing I'll show you is it on the ground. I'm gonna turn it around, lift the back up because I need to put shocks that match the shocks that I put in here in the back as well as shock extensions. And then we should be completely finished with the drop on this thing. 
now I have this thing flipped around to put the relocation brackets on and if you notice this thing is completely bottomed out which I knew it was from driving it down the road but uh, we're gonna fix that not only with the relocation bracket but with the new shock so I'm gonna take the two bolts out up top the single bolt in the bottom and then I'll show you guys what it looks like with the um, new relocation bracket in place I wanted to show you guys one of the problems I'm running into um, this guy this um, shock extension does not slide up on here and I don't know if you guys can tell but there's a there's a spot in the metal here where it sticks out so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to grind this off a little bit in order to get this to slide up into place where it needs to be now I don't know if this is an issue on the trucks it probably isn't but I'm hoping that um, there's enough metal here for me to just shave a little bit of this off and then still be able to get that thing slid up in place and bolted where I need to bolt it now I'm not gonna be grinding on the outsides of this but um, hopefully we can get this done. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna use a grinder. I'm not gonna grind it all the way up just to where I need this thing to set because we have to drill holes up here on the top in order to mount this thing. After grinding for a while, I was able to get it, and as you can see, I sprayed a little bit of black paint on it just to keep it from rusting. But guys, I will tell you that it's incredibly hard to get a hole in from the outside. So the other thing is the kit only came with one bolt um, for the smaller hole so you have the two bolts so three total per side is what it came with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the inner hole I didn't really mess much with the outer hole like I said it was incredibly hard to try to drill a hole out there anyway so this will be enough to keep it in place especially because the pressure on the shock is going to push down and there is a plate to catch it so this is really more to just keep it in line uh, on the upstroke so we're not gonna have any issues there I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these things in and then up here you can see where the old shocks bolted in that's just a 13 millimeter I'm gonna go ahead get all this put in place and then I'll show you guys one more time before we set this on the ground and finally take a look at it so as you can see everything is now installed uh, everything is bolted down tightened up and um, it looks good guys I think it's gonna work really well it does give additional travel plus we got a shorter shock which both of these like I said I'll list in the description down below but let's get out from under this thing let's uh, drop it down on the ground and take a look around it so after several days of working on this and I know this was probably a pretty long video but we had a lot to do and I will tell you guys this thing looks amazing i love the look of it um i think i'm going to try to find another set of tires just a set of used ones to, so i can get a good idea of what the actual the way it's going to set um as far as maybe i need to bring the back down just a hair more but i'm really excited it's looking good i i also will tell you guys this thing has about killed me as far as um it was way more work than anything else um all these trucks that I lower are pretty easy for the most part, I think, because I've done a lot of them. But just this guy here, bolting those A-arms on, you actually have to either take the inner fender out or you have to bend it up. And it's just a huge hassle. And uh, honestly, it, it's been like, I've worked on this a little bit each night for probably two weeks. And uh, it just seems like nothing was going right. And I tried to, uh, I tried to talk about some of those things that I struggled with in the video. But tell me what you guys think. I, I think those brakes look really nice. I will say when I do the motor swap, I think I'm going to put a um, brake booster on it because it seems like the brakes are a little spongy. And I also think I'm going to do a disc conversion on the back, but it's getting there. I know it looks weird without the front end on it, but I'm trying to take some of the parts off that he's gonna have to take off when it goes to paint. And we're still a little bit away from paint. I actually talked to him today and he said he's got a little bit to go but like always guys i will list all this stuff in the description down below there was a ton of stuff and hopefully you guys don't have to deal with changing a arms and stuff like that like i did if you're just dropping it that would have made it a lot easier but because i had to replace everything um everything is brand new other than um i can't even think of what i didn't replace in the front it's got a new steering box new upper and lower ball joints new a arm bushings obviously because of the a arms um obviously the new sprint spindles and struts all new bearings outer and inner tie rod ends i the list goes on and on everything on the front of this thing is new and it doesn't make noise like it did before when you hit a bump it would creak and make all kinds of racket and that's because of those poly bushings and those a-arms i at least i'm pretty sure that's what it was but let me know what you guys think like i said hit the comments uh this thing is coming along we're getting there 
it's just taking a really long time to get there but if you guys are not subscribed you got to go hit that subscribe button while you're down there make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video we got a ton of stuff coming guys so stay tuned to see what we work on next